Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Move for a Movement. I have with me today Trisha Gomez, uh, creator of Rhythmworks. Uh, he also sells Dance in a Box. We will get into all of that. She's calling in from the, the lovely warm Florida. Uh, so we're jealous. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Trisha, for, for joining. Happy to be here. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. How are you doing? in this uh, crazy time, unprecedented, we'll say. You know, I started it off, it was like the great pause, right? And I was like, I'm just uh, gonna take uh, it right. easy. I'm gonna do like some house cleaning in my business and in my personal life. And I was just gonna like kind of ease through it. And then an idle mind, like that entrepreneurial idle mind, doesn't last mm -hmm. for long. All of a sudden, it's like I got an uh, idea. I got an idea. Let's do about this. What about this? We've been waiting to do this. We should do it now. And now I have more than my plate can hold to do right now. Um, so it is a busy life right now. Mm -hmm. And we'll we'll get into sort of shifts with this time. But yeah, it's I that resonates with me that like. I used to be running all around New York City, like teaching and walking dogs for get some money, <laughs> <laughs> taking classes that are like running around the city all day long. And then I'm not. And then so I'm like, what can I write? What can I <laughs> like? What can I build? Yeah, so, we always fill yeah. the space. We just need to, well, at least for me, I need to learn how to, I need to learn how to have the space as a thing, right? Because we try to yeah. fill the space with all the things but we just need some space. And I need to realize that the space is a thing and I need to make, make time for it. That's a great way to put it. Yeah, it's like, it's okay. And in fact, it's necessary for that space to not be built. Correct. I love it, yeah. <laughs> so, Rhythmworks, uh, pulling this right from the website, um, offers a pathway to integrate kids with special needs and individual learning differences into inclusive dance classes. Uh, as I mentioned, you also sell Dance in a Box, which gives the tools for educators to do the work themselves. I'm curious to hear the backstory, sort of how it all evolved, you know, when you decided to do this, how it grew. You know, necessity, necessity. I It all started back in the early 2000s. I was diagnosed with lupus, and I was teaching about 21 classes a week at that point, and I wow. cut back. But at that time, like I was teaching, my, my biggest population at my studio was three to seven year old hip hop students. Mm -hmm. And no one was teaching hip hop to mm -hmm. anyone younger, like age eight. And so to find someone to take my classes over was challenging. I ended up having to like hire somebody from Tennessee to come in and take my classes until I could train somebody. And um, I just kept saying, like, I wish I had, like, something to give to the new teacher that just said, here, teach these things in class. And my friends like, why, why don't you make flashcards of the dance steps you teach in class? Because they all have, like, cute, fun names to them, and they're easy to remember, and it's totally kid and age appropriate. And I was like... I think I'm going to make flashcards. So that's how Hip Hop and Pop started. So we, we kind of, like threw together this ragtag team of like a, my, a, one of my students' mom was a photographer. We had a graphic artist parent that, that was at the studio. I had um, a recording studio next to me that also did videography. So we all kind of pulled our resources together and created this, created hip hop in a box. And, and I remember my husband saying like, do you, do you think anybody will want it? You know, do you think people will buy it? And I'm like, well, I would use it. I mean, I don't know if anybody else would. And so I'm like, let's, let's just try it. And so, you know, that we went from having 2,000 hip hop in a boxes in our, in our garage. We couldn't park our cars there. Um, and then now, <laughs> now we're well into, I would say, 3,500 schools worldwide now. Wow. With, and then, so it, out of that grew more teaching tools. So we came up with one, two, three dance was, which was the next card kit because people wanted more dance steps. Um, we did the, the teaching guide, which wasn't so, it's not so much of a, um, it's not so much of like a hip hop history and technique guide, but more of 
how can you take this content of a hip hop class and bring it into for ages three to seven in an appropriate way? Um, so it focuses on a lot of other things besides just teaching hip hop as well. Um, and then, you know, our, our visual aids kits, all these things started coming into play. And then, um, you know, tragedy struck um, in 2011 for me and completely rocked my world and knocked me down and I almost died. And um, through that process, Rhythmworks came about. And, you know, just going with the flow and following the signs that got put in front of me, I was like, you know what, this, this is, this has been my life's soul mission, not soul and like singular mission, but my soul, mm. this thing that I've done right. in my life up till this point was practice. It was mm. in gathering. It was, it was building the foundation in which I had to build rhythm works on. And, uh, you know, I, I pulled from every bit of every corner of my life to build that program and it has become something so much more than what I ever could have imagined it to be. Um, the, pe the caliber of the people that have the heart to want to do better and, and be inclusive in their studios and, and be the best that they can be so that their students can be the best that they can be. I, I never really imagined those types of people who would come to that program. Yeah, I was focused on the content of the program, but then, you know, there's the, the human factor to it. And I was just like, continually am blown away by the caliber of people who um, want to know more and do more for their students. So it's really exciting. So that's a shortish, longish <laughs> background. Oh, okay. wonderful. Yeah, and those <laughs> times that you like step back and you see that impact and it's like, might have come from another motivation, another impetus, and then you're seeing the human impact can just yeah. like make you step back for a moment. You know, I, I, um, I say that I tell people when they do my training, I always say this, I, you know, there's a line in Hamilton at the very end where he's kind of going through his whole like, you know, right before he dies, like life right. flash, he says legacy. What is a legacy? It's planting seeds in the garden you never get to see. And, mm. you know, I, I look at Rhythm Works as um, my, my son who passed away during that whole tragedy. Um, that's his garden. It's his, it's his legacy that's come through me. He'll never get to see the fruits of it. I never get to see, you know, how, you know, someone comes to get trained, then they go into their com community right. and spread that out. Um, I never get to see that, but it's part of the legacy and it's part of all the other successes and failures and information that we've gathered along the way has, has led up to this and is continuing to lead to the next thing in the future. But, um, you know, it's, it's, you just never know who you end up touching by, by the what ripple you're... effects. Yeah. Like a, like a yes. um, pebble in a pond. It just it's goes good. out. You never yeah. know. One little it. thing can make the biggest difference in somebody's life. And I really do think that through the Rhythm Works program, we provide opportunities on a minute by minute basis to change somebody's life. Mm. It's a good segue into <laughs> what I wanted to ask next. So, you know, this might be a lot to sort of Explain in a clear way, but I am curious about what these classes look and feel like, what the structure and how, um, if you could speak to that, might differ from your traditional dance class in your hometown dance studio. Yeah, you know, I think um, I think they're similar. I think a lot of the things we use in the Rhythm Works class transfer very well over into other classes, but we, we separate class into what I call a little pod structure. So, you know, you have your you have your rhythm. We have something called rhythm lessons where we sit in a circle and we drum and we kind of break I down concepts that maybe a kid's not understanding, like crossing their feet and opening their feet. Uh -huh. This might be something that's challenging to them. So we break it down and do it in a drumming pattern with their hands first to kind of understand. Mm. The um, we go through, you know, warm ups across the floor. We teach a little, you know, some choreography and we play a game at the end of class. And it's, it's really fun, but you know the, the difference, I think the main difference between 
um, a specialized rhythm works class and a, a general population, typical run of the mill dance class is that in the regular dance class, we assume that there are certain skills that a child has. So we assume mm. that if I'm going to teach uh -huh. it, okay, I'm assuming the kid already knows how to jump, right? I'm assuming that a kid already knows how to balance on one leg. Um, but many of our students don't yet. So it provides a place for them to really learn those skills, those foundational skills, so that they can move into a general population class and participate because then they have those, those skills um, that they need. So, you know, in a RhythmWorks class, the teachers are trained to work with therapy, you know, therapists. So if a child has any kind of therapeutic goals, um, we can incorporate that into learning in the class. Um, to, to assist in those goals. Um, you know, we may have a plan, but you introduce something and you see, you know, oh gosh, this is a disaster, right? Like I was talking about the cross open. We introduce, right. we introduce just, you just hands on your hips, you jump up, cross your feet, jump up, open your feet. Hot mess. It was a hot mess. <laughs> kids falling down. Barely anybody was crossing their feet. There was a lot of, you know, moving back and forth with their feet or just kind of jumping up in place. But no one was really, really doing what we were asking them to do. And I think we easily could have said, yeah, this is too hard for them. Let's, let's not do this. Let's change this dance step and put something easier there. But in looking at them, I was like, no, they... I don't think they're understanding the concept of what we want them to do. And it's not that they're not understanding it. Their body is not able yep. to process yep. all of that information and do it. So I said, let's like pull it back. Let's just make it a basic, simple concept and rhythm lessons. Let's teach the each piece, piece by piece by piece by piece, and slowly start to, to scaffold the challenges. So, for example, in that situation, we... We started at our rhythm lessons where we would drum. And so we would do one hand, cross open, cross open. But we use visual um, aids. So we'd have a yellow circle and a red heart. So we would go yellow, red, yellow, red, yellow, red. And then we do the other hand, red, yellow, red, yellow. Once they got good at that, then we did uh, both hands at the same time. Yep, yep. Once they got good with the hands, we sat them down and did the same process one foot at a time. So they were able to transfer that into their lower extremities. Once that their lower extremities understood that concept, then we added balance challenge to that where we stood them up and had them hold on to the bars and do the same thing, one foot, the other foot, both feet. And then we brought them center floor. So we, we took it down to a point that was at where they, in their level of where they were, and then we slowly built that up. And I think that, you know, having a specialized class to say, okay, we're going to take 11 weeks to teach this was really great. And we probably wouldn't have had that opportunity to do that with those kids had we been in a, a you know, regular dance class. So having a specialized class, I think, really provides a space for kids um, who may get over challenged in another class to really go at the speed that they need to be. And it allows the teachers to really drill down into exactly what those kids need in order to get the skills they need. Mm. Fun. It's fun, right? It's kind of a, a yeah. energetic hip hop ish class. Right. Um, you know, we're not definitely not doing a whole lot of style, but it's a you know, it's it's you know fun music and um, you know kind of a a free flowing fun class. That idea of scaffolding, and so interesting. It's like, that's what happens as a, a baby, an infant, you know, they have this developmental marker and then that, and then, but with a certain disability or, you know, physical, mental challenge they might have condition, that's not necessarily happening in that same way. So that ability to step back, it's like, so your brain body connection, whatever that might be, mm -hmm. doesn't get this crossing the midline thing. Right. Okay. Can, can, can you do it with your hands? And then the brain starts to understand the crossing the midline, right? right. Yeah, and it's just the basic concepts. You know, when you think about dancing as, as a whole, right? Think of a triangle. And if that triangle had a bunch of different layers on it, the yes. very tip of it would be dancing. But underneath mm -hmm. dancing, you have, you know, you have to understand rhythm, 
right? You have to be able to recognize rhythm. You have to understand how does my body move? Look, I can straighten my arms and bend my arms. I can straighten my legs and bend my legs. Um, you have to understand force, right? So am I going to do it soft and smooth or am I going to do strong and, and hard, you know, or sharp? So there's the force that we use. Then there's connecting that movement with the rhythm that we understand. So you're bringing in a timing and rhythm element and, and, and so on. And, and then sequencing comes up. You know, are you able to remember sequences? In a typical class, a child, you know, a typically developing child can do all of those things simultaneously right away. But many of the students that we work with, their body system is not able to produce all of that at one time. So we really take the time and go through each layer of that triangle and, and scaffold and build it up to get to the point to be able to dance. Um, but there's so many other parts of it that if not, if we don't take the time to teach that, it gets lost. And then the kids struggle and then we see behavior because the kids are over challenged and struggling and it's, you know, not fun for them because they missed something along the way. So, um, big domino. <laughs> Amazing. Love it. So you said 3,500 schools, like something like that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, and you know, the ripple effects you're speaking about that, you know, all of those places that your program is reaching, you don't necessarily see that. Um, but I'm curious for you, sort of apart from the data, which has its place, it's important in its own ways, um, but what are some like favorite stories or experiences that you can share to give us an even like clearer picture of the impact that this work Gosh. can make? If, 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 if anybody is like me, like I'm a crier, like when something really good happens to somebody, I'm just like, ah, I'm crying for them, right? So yeah. it's a daily experience in <laughs> in our rhythm works classes, but let's see, to, to think of like some of the the bigger impactful moments. Um, we had a little guy that started taking class with us when he was three years old. He um, operationally was about on, on a year and a half, so an 18 month old was where he was developmentally. And all he would do was just run around class the whole time. And every now and then he would stop for like a few seconds and do what we were doing for like just a couple seconds and then start running again. And it was, it, that was his motif in class. He was just like, <laughs> run, 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 stop, do something, run, run. And, you know, of course the running around is a little distracting, but he was still participating in his own way that we could yep. see. Um, and so we started, we started looking into why he was needing to run and we started kind of you know figuring out is it sensory related what's going on and his mom would send us videos of him like interacting in his daily life his his um, physical therapist was actually one of our teachers as well so she had some background information and um she would send us a bunch of videos of him like playing around in leaves or like, like he, they would push him while he would swing and he would just get really engaged when he was having light touch. So wind in his face, you know, the ruffling of the leaves on his body, he would get really engaged at that point. So we started thinking, gosh, I wonder if he, if the running is the only thing that he knows what to do that gives him that wind on his face. And yeah. that tactile experience is helping his body organize enough for him to be able to participate for a few seconds, and then he has to do it again. So we started adding a bunch of um, uh, tactile input dance steps where we would like nice. do a lot of like arm movements or anything that was like touchy feely. And anytime we would start to do those things, he would participate in class. And so the, the running became less, the participation became more because we were giving him the sensory input he needed in the class. Um, this is the same, another kid, this same kid, um, his goal was to learn how to jump. So for a long time, we were going through all the different elements of jumping so that his body can understand the motor plan. And the day that this kid's feet left the floor when he jumped, his mom was like, he jumped, he jumped. And we were just like, oh my God. And he would do it again and again. And I would like, we were all just like hot mess, hot mess that day. And those are the things, you know, like I've, I've 
raise dancers to go on and become professional dancers. But when you teach a kid how to jump, that's a life changing skill. You know, that, that kid that changes how they interact with other kids their age and you know what they can do on the playground and you know, just, just life in general. Think about how many times you might jump in a day that you don't even realize you do those things, right? And so like that's one of the that's one of the things. Another um, another thing that I love, this was kind of earlier on, um, I had been approached by a school teacher to do our rhythm works classes at a, um, a specialized, a special ed preschool. And I went in to talk to the principal and she was like, well, we've tried dance class before and you know, it's just a little too challenging for them and not many kids were participating. So, you know, I just, I don't think it's the right thing to do. And I said, I, I understand, but you know, part of what we do is we really put a lot of proprioceptive input and, and vestibular input into the class itself. And she's just stopped me. She's like, hang on. She goes, you, the fact that you just said proprioceptive and vestibular makes me realize that this is a way more than just a dance class. And I think we should give it a try. But she's like, you know, but probably won't get a whole lot of kids up and participating. And so in my mind, I was like, game on, sister. Like, challenge accepted, right? <laughs> Two weeks later, she, she sends me an email and she's like, okay, I don't know what's going on in those classes, but I keep getting videos of kids who have never participated in anything. Some of them, they didn't even know that these kids could follow instructions. And these are the kids that are front and center participating in dance class by themselves without any kind of assistance, like totally self-motivated. And she's like, we need the parents to see this. I want you guys to perform at our open house. And I was just like, yes, right? And then we perform at the open house and the parents are just in tears. They're like, I didn't know a kid could dance. You know, it's just, those, it's, it sounds like little things, but those are the things that you realize, okay, we dance is just the vehicle that we're using to impact lives, you know, and it makes it so much bigger than just a dance routine or a dance step. So, yeah, <laughs> going forward through life and like being able to dance at a school dance or at a wedding and like the, right. the way our body carries us through life and it's how we interact with the world and giving someone those skills at yeah. a young age. You can't really quantify that or like not qualify it any kind of simple way <laughs> i know and, and the other thing we you know you rarely consider is the family impact you know a lot of our students their parents spend their whole life just going to therapy and you know they're, they might get invited to do something with their friends and no we, we we can't or whatever because we have to go to therapy or you know that kind of stuff but the parents like i've had parents get excited of saying you know it's been so great to say I can't go somewhere because my son's going to dance class, right? Like they get to do something that's cool and fun, right? And yeah. and then the parents get to hang out with each other while the kids are in dance class. So they form their little like tight knit parent group that are, you know, they're, it's, it's you, there's all those things you don't, you don't see, but mm. what are important. Yeah, those ripple effects. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm curious, you mentioned, um, people learning to do this work and the training. I'm curious if you could speak a little bit more about that. Um, if readers might have their interest peaked, you know, make those ripple effects further wherever they are. Yeah, well, well, back in the day before COVID, <laughs> we, we actually did classes in person, but um, because of COVID we're doing, um, it's all online now. So you can do it at uh, two options. Um, there is an on-demand option that is 17 hours long. You get 30 days to complete the course. Um, and and then you do a little bit of a practical application of assignments that you submit so that we understand that you know um, you, you were able to understand that the information we gave out and so we do it that way or we also do what I call blended courses which is the same content but it's split up into four weeks so each week you get four to five hours of content to learn and at the end of that learning week, we all jump on Zoom together and kind of talk about what we've learned and answer any questions you might have. So it has a little bit more of a personal touch and it holds you a little bit more accountable to having to complete the work by, you know, in chunks at certain times. So yeah, everything's online right now, which is great because we're really able to reach anybody everywhere, you know, all over the world now, which is great. And um, 
Yeah, it's it's pretty simple. But the course itself, so you know, there are things that we we don't consider when teaching class, and we cover those things in, in our course. So it's things like sensory integration, and how our sensory um, environment affects the way we learn and behave and self regulate. Mm -hmm. uh, we go through the whole behavioral modification part of it, so understanding what might be causing behaviors, what might be perpetuating behaviors, and how we can um, put a modification plan in place. Uh, we do the whole cognitive processing side of it, so recognizing when a kid might be over-challenged and how do we pull back from that and scaffold and chain, um, and then add in visual tools and, and maybe like hand-over-hand -hand motor movement. Uh, we talk about the physical side of it, so you know, what happens if you're working with someone who has limited range of motion or maybe hyper mobility um, that are, you know, excessively mobile um, or maybe has uh, certain types of muscle structures, like as kids with CP who might have spasticity in their muscles. How do we accommodate that in class? How do we modify for people in wheelchairs? It covers like all these other things and it's all based on evidence-based principles from occupational therapy, physical therapy, behavioral therapy, speech therapy, and then we apply the dance and rhythm on top of those practices. So it, 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 what it does is it gives you, it's not a play-by-play -play book, right? It's not like today you're going to do this, tomorrow you're going to do that. It's a framework and it gives you the tips and tools and knowledge for you to assess what's going on and try a bunch of different things to see what's gonna work. Because what works for one kid is not gonna work for the other kid. And to be honest with you, what works for one kid one week is not gonna work for them the next week. Yep. So yep. You, you know, the more tools you have, the more you can continue to try to, um, to help this child in any way that they need to. Mm. And what kind of vibes with one teacher's like creativity and energy might not with another. So being able to come to that with your unique creativity is going to be a lot more successful, I would say. Yeah. In cases. yeah. And, you know, one of the things we talk about in the, in the program when I train the teachers is if anything, I want you to walk away from today with the idea that you are not just a dance teacher. You are a teaching artist. And the, mm. the way I define a teaching artist is you become a teaching artist when the the concept of what you're teaching becomes more important than the content of what you're teaching. So you introduce some content and you go, wait a minute, Sally's not understanding this. What can I do? It's not Sally's problem. She's not understanding it. Obviously, I didn't teach it in a way that Sally could understand it. So what can I do? How can I get creative to get the point across to Sally so that she can have the 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 option the the pos the possibility of learning it right so it to me the onus lies on us as teachers to get creative and to figure out what we need to do in a in a teaching situation yeah i was thinking before a little bit about like i'm a yoga practitioner and teacher and um kind of aligning it with okay this pose doesn't work for this person well what does that pose accomplish and what other pose We'll do that same thing. So it's not the pose, it's what the pose, it's the it's outcome. It's How can you get that another way? Right, uh, absolutely. And that's what, it, that's what it boils down to. Like, why are we doing these steps? You know, like in the RhythmWorks program, we have 150 dance steps. So we use the dance steps that are in Hip Hop in a Box and One, Two, Three Dance. But those dance steps are classified over 31 different categories. So it could be, you know, this dance step is giving you tactile input, proprioceptive input, vestibular input. It's helping you to sequence. It's crossing the midline. It's bilateral reciprocal coordination. It's continuation of movement, and it is out of sight. You know, there's all these possibilities that this one dance step has. These are the skills in that one dance step. So it, we kind of teach you the why. What? What? Why would we want to add this dance step into a class that is specifically for um motor development and an increasing cognitive processing and you know those types of things why are that all of the content that we put into the class is specifically purposeful for our students needs and every class is going to be different because each class is going to need different things so you'll use different things in each class mm. 
And it's kind of crazy to think about. It's like this one dance step, everything that is going on and the miracle that is the human body. <laughs> I know. And especially for, for kids, the way they, they just soak up because their bodies, their minds, their spirits are just learning so much all the time. Um, so that like accelerated, you know, through that learning process in the body, everything that is happening. Yeah. And the cool thing too, you know, when you, when you do things purposefully like that, um, through dance, cause dance, it, it makes your brain active in ways that other activities don't activate your brain. And so what we're seeing is kids who had maybe plateaued in, in therapy, they come to dance class and all of a sudden their, their skill set inventory takes off, right? They're bringing in, you know, on these all new, all new skills. Um, we had one kiddo that she, um, she has um, cerebral palsy. And when she came to us, she was very, um, she wasn't walking one foot in front of the other. She would kind of just wobble walk. And um, her therapeutic goal was to walk one foot in front of the other. And so, you know, we didn't just try to push the kid into walking one foot in front of the other. We took her where she was, which was in this, you know, the, the frontal plane where she was just like barely balancing with her feet. And we started just moving her from side to side in that plane of movement that she was most comfortable in to, to, yeah. to, start to teach weight shifting and then to teach single leg balancing and then to teach com complete weight shifting. Once she was built those skills up, we, we changed it to where she was stable, but she would start to touch in front and go into the sagittal plane at that point. And once she kind of got used to moving in that new plane, we started doing a little bit more rocking backwards and forwards and weight shifting. Um, and within, within a few months, this kid was running. She had reached her goal. Um, she was unstoppable. This kid went from like completely fearful to completely fearless. Like she was like, I can do it. I can do it. And she, you know, and I think that, it, that, um, fear is what inhibits most of our students. So when they, when they start to say, wait a minute, I can do it, that fear starts to go away and they become more, more risk takers. And the risk taking is what we need to do in order to build our skill set and learn more. And so I said, you know, that's one of the biggest, when we did a big research study, um, one of the biggest impacts that um, was across the board was increased risk taking. In a good way, not like it's not like kids were like you know doing things that were dangerous for them, but increased make it in the sense of they were more willing to try new things, and the more willing they are to try new things, the more skills they started to bring on. So um, it's, it's multifaceted. <laughs> uh, yeah. And talk about life changing, you know, because that's what childhood should be. That's how you learn. Yeah, you, you take risks. More, right? Yeah. I love it. You mentioned COVID, good times. I feel like it's just like the obligatory elephant in the room thing to talk about. I'm curious about how you've kept the mission alive. You talked about training um, over, you know, virtually in this time. Um, but classes, you know, is are those have those had to do online? What does that look like? What does that yeah. feel like? It's been challenging for sure, um, and and it's really depends on the kids in the class. You know, some kids do really well with um, with Zoom classes. Some kids not so much. So we have had a lot of kids, just like everybody else, where we've you know we've had a reduction in in classes and or you know kids in classes, um, or you know doing individual classes instead of group classes for certain kids. Um, the biggest challenge, just like with anybody else, is you know you're taking two environments. You're taking a dance class environment where the kids have learned to behave in a certain way, and you're bringing it into the home environment where the kids behave a different way. And right. the teachers are expecting classroom behavior, but the kids are like, "Hey, I'm home. I can do whatever I want." Right? So you you have this um, blending of behavioral expectations and. Just like with anyone, you just you got to prepare for it and teach it and um, tell tell the kids tell, tell the parents what the expectations are. How, you know, the parents need to understand how to prep the kids for class at home. Um, so you you do what you can. We all do what we can, and you know I, I have a lot of hope and faith that we will be back one hundred percent in the studios sooner rather than later. 
I'm hoping by fall time we're kind of back to normal. Although I live out in Florida and it's like COVID does not exist here. Like it's 100%. I've heard. Like, yeah. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> yeah, we, I went out to dinner and it was like, um, it was full on like a rager. There was a band, there was people all over the place. And my husband and I were like masked up. We were the only people with masks on. And I was like, this is a super spreader event. <laughs> like stressed out being here. So yeah. So I'm, you just got to roll with it. Do what yeah. you can. You can't please everybody. You can't. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to work for everybody. And you make it work for those that work. And then the other kids will, they'll come back when we reopen. Mm. And those ripple effects are happening, even if it's not every single child. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah absolutely. Mm. You spoke about that, that research. I'm sure it's just... And that story about, you know, in the school and like, oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> These kids are like, that have never participated in anything else. Yeah. That, that right there. Yeah. It's just, it's dan you know, dan I've, we all know that dance is magical, but we, you know, we don't always define it. Of, you know, what about it is magical or what, you know, what makes it magical. Um, but when you work with a population of, of people who struggle, um, in one way or another, and then you see how adding dance enriches their lives in, you know, it's not just the enjoyment of movement. I mean, that to me, the enjoyment of movement is just, that's a natural thing and it's to be assumed, <laughs> but just the onboarding of, of skills, the meeting of friends, you know, there's the social emotional part of it. There's the cognitive part of it. There's, you know, there's so many domains that dance touches, um, but it's just amplified when you work with students who have, who struggle in different ways. And, you know, I wish when I was a, a teacher just starting out that I had this information because I, I look back at all the kids that I overlooked or maybe didn't help out the way I should have helped them out. And I'm just like, oh man, I had so many missed opportunities in my my previous teaching years. You know, I wish I wish I could go back and like give them a hug and say, I'm so sorry I didn't pay attention to the needs that you had. You know, um, but it's I, we we focus on teaching people who have special needs, but it is really for anybody. My opinion is that we all have special needs in some kind of way. We all process things differently. We all learn differently. Yep. We all, yep. you know, we all need things in different ways. It's just some, some individuals are more ap amplified in one way than others. And, but we all fall on these different spectrums of these different things. And, you know, your situation is not any more fortunate or less fortunate than my situation. It's just different. Right. And so when you start to, when you start to think like that, it's not, I teach these kids and then I teach kids with special needs too. It's just, I teach kids and I am attentive to all of their needs. So I feel like the information that we give in the RhythmWorks program is necessary for any teacher, dance teacher, school teacher, karate teacher, swim teacher. Like if you're going to be working with the human population, you should have an understanding of these things because then your eyes are open to all the things you didn't know you needed to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, was, I was thinking of like two different levels, like able body, just your typical school kid. Um, and this was coming up for me when you were speaking about that principal that was like, oh my God, you know, look at these kids. Our school system doesn't really start, like there's the awareness of the seven intelligences, but it's like kids are gonna sit there and learn the three R's. Right. Mm -hmm. And there might be these kids that they're very much kinesthetic learners. And I think it's getting better from what I can see. But by and large, it's like that's not that outlet for learning isn't really there. Right. right. So maybe yeah. there's this. I was just I was just having this conversation the other day. I'm like, you know, inclusion is great. Right. The more we can be inclusive, the better. But the problem is, is that in schools, they took these kids who used to be in these segregated special needs classes and then started bringing them in so that they can have inclusion, but they didn't give the teachers the tools they needed to do that. Mm -hmm. I've had right. so many school teachers come through the RhythmWorks program and say, I learned more 
in this course than I did my entire college degree, you know, on how to- 17 hours. Kids, they learn more in the 17 hours than they did in a whole degree when it comes down to understanding how to how to work with people. So, um, you know, the, yes, we want inclusion, but we got to provide the teachers with the understanding of how to how to work with everybody, right? Otherwise, these kids are sitting in an, in a class, but they're not being included in the lessons of what's going on. They're still, you know, separate but equal, like, you know, whatever. It's not they're in that class, but they're not being treated as an equal to all of the people in the class, you know. So okay. knowledge is power, and I think that goes along with everything too. You know, when you talk about race or religion or anything and when we talk about inclusion in that setting education is the key right we don't do it just because we're supposed to do it we need to do it because we understand why it's important to do it mm. cosine 100 percent. yeah <laughs> yeah and I, I was also thinking on the on the flip side you have kids with special needs that win or just even the creative space in a dance class that is accessible to them like what that can be in their lives, right? Because oh, yeah. you, you referenced the you know, busy schedules of kids with special needs, like they're going to the speech therapist, they're going to the this doctor and that doctor, and then they got occupational therapy and it's like just packed. Yeah. They can go somewhere and they can just move their body in a way that is accessible to them and they can feel these wins. Like, oh my God, I was able to jump up and then cross my legs or like even just jump up. Mm -hmm. Like what that could mean for a kid. It just it kind of blows my mind. Yeah. I mean, I think about, like, I have um, a lot of dietary sensitivities. Mm -hmm. And when I go to a restaurant, it is like, it's a, it's a process, right? I have to search out the restaurants and look at the menus. Do they have something I might be able to order? Then I go to the restaurant and I'm, I say, well, I want this dish, but I'm gluten-free, I'm dairy-free, I'm keto, I'm all these things because I have allergies. And, and and to have a waitress go, oh, um, so here's what I would do. I We can do this. We can move this. We can modify it this way. I can swap out this thing, thing for that thing. Like If somebody does that, like they have me as a customer for life because mm. they understand my needs. They're able to make accommodations for me. Sometimes I go to a restaurant and I'm like, is this gluten-free? And they're like, I don't know. And I'm like, can you ask the chef? if it's gluten-free and they're like, okay, <laughs> this is the last time I'm eating at this restaurant, right? right so right. so I, you know, while I may not have the, the challenges that our students have, I have different challenges. And when someone is, is willing to validate me and say, oh yeah, okay, um, you know, my, my cousin, is um you know gluten sensitive as well or whatever and then they they know how to modify like they've obviously been trained mm -hmm. enough to understand how to modify food for allergies then that that just means the world to me like it, it makes me feel like i'm part of the group i'm accepted yeah. to be there you know it's it's that i'm, I'm not being a, a pain right because right. a lot of times i'm like oh i'm so sorry i don't i don't mean to like be the the, the person that's like, can I swap this and change this? And they're like, don't worry about it. Don't worry. You know, so I feel like, you know, the mom who always has to apologize for their kid who may, you know, misbehave in class, but then they take their kids to our class and we're like, hey, man, we got it. You know, like, we're good. We're, we'll figure it out. And you, I, like, I, I relate my relief when I find someone who wants to, who understands what I'm going through to like the parents' relief when they find a dance teacher who understands what their child needs. So... Mm -hmm. We all, need, we all need it. Yeah, for sure. Another good segue, I feel like, um, to start to wind down. I always just like to ask, um, what has given you light? What are some wins uh, for either you personally or for, for your business, uh, for what you do out there, that we can celebrate with you? Oh, well, here's one right here. <laughs> this is, that sure. is, sure. <laughs> I, have, I have lupus. And I have learned that if I don't um, keep the stress in check, that I will get very mm -hmm. sick. Uh -huh. And so moving to the water um, has been a life changer for me. 
Um, one of the things that I've done this year that has absolutely nothing to do with dance is I have become um, a real estate professional. So my husband nice. and I started investing in real estate. And so we have a storage facility and two short-term rental properties. And, and you know, that's been fun. Mm -hmm. But there's two... Oh, I know I can talk about one of them. One of them I can't really talk about in detail. But uh -huh. two exciting things that are happening, wins that have come about this year in the, for the dance world. And one of them we are about to launch. Um, it's called Teaching Artist Exchange. And think of it as like the Etsy for dance teachers. So mm -hmm. there are so many dance teachers out there that have really wonderful ideas but they don't have the platform to continually market and sell it on a global in a global nature. So what you can do is if you have if you have your tutorial videos, books you've written, um, lesson plans, props that you make, all these things, if you want to sell them, you can open up your own little store on Teaching Artist Exchange, and then other teachers can buy from you. Um, and then we're also going to be partnering um, and, and consulting with people who have really great ideas that they just don't have the, um, the capabilities to package it and, and get it ready to get out to people. So um, that we are about to start our talent search for that, where we um, mm. start having people, you know, put their existing products up on the store. Um, and we'll we'll do the big launch this summer. So that I'm super excited about because it gives teachers a way to um, make a little side money on the, all the hard work that they've been doing and share their ideas ideas with teachers around the world and also get ideas from teachers around the world. So there's that. Um, we are also in the talks um, of, of uh, acquiring the rights for another another cert certification type that is kind of, it's not special need, it's not like special needs focused, but it is in, um, in developmental dance. So, um, that will be announced in about a month or so, but there is more coming. Very excited. Yeah. Stay tuned mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. Um, get teacher exchange for me personally. I'm building something announcement coming, but it's in process and, yeah, well, definitely keep an boy, eye for that. Got a place for you to sell it. <laughs> yep. So, for Teach sure. Artist Exchange um, yeah, is, I love it. is the name of it, and um, yeah, it's just going to be a global hub for teachers to exchange information and have like one space to go to find all right. the things. You know, right now there's so many people that have their things, but you're like, ah, oh, I saw it on Facebook somewhere. I don't remember who had it, and now right. this is one. Go to this one place, find what you need. Support other teachers by by getting what you need, and um, and support yourself too. So, yeah, yeah. I think you know one thing I've seen through COVID is just teachers have seen how how much they're in this together and how they can support each other. You know that whole listeners might remember it was recent actually about the um, it was a world of dance. You know, was trying to build this. Yes. Like basically, like big box store. <laughs> Yeah. Of, of dance studios and they're like whoa, whoa wait you just said that our industry is dead like get out of here anything no yeah that was a big and then the dance channel. world just was all together and like no we're, we've been adaptive and innovative work together and we'll continue to do that yeah and misty Lown was phenomenal in that right. Right, right. So she was like i'm reaching out to him and she contacted them and she had a long conversation right. with them and I think they finally realized that they were like, um, we need to apologize. And maybe we're not ready to launch this yet. So right. Right. we stick together when we need to. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. Well, I could talk to you for a long time, I think. Uh -huh. um, but we will wind down. Thank you so, so much for joining me again. A lot of just so much food for thought um, to go forward with. I believe. Um, thank you everyone for tuning in. If this conversation resonated with you, please like, subscribe, comment, share, spread the word, all that good stuff. And we will see you again. Yay. Thanks everybody. Yay.